As we conclude this third chapter of the book of Revelation, and we conclude the Lord Jesus' review and assessment of the last two of the seven churches from Asia, who were indeed the immediate audience of this book, I want to remind you again that we should remember that it was not by accident that their spiritual health, their vital signs, if you will, of each church was checked at the beginning of this revelatory message. The book of Revelation, as you remember, it is a book that dealt with things that told them about some things that had happened before the time when John wrote it. It also talks about things that were happening during the times that John wrote it. And then he, even it talked about things that would be yet to come after John and some things that are still yet to come from the days in which we now live. But it's important to remember that as John received this heavenly, divine, apocalyptic vision from the Lord, that he started off with the spiritual health check of each church. I want to emphasize that over and over and over again because it is important for us to remember that you must first always know who you are. And you must also know the condition of your spiritual health before you can ever be who God has called you to be. That works in the life of each church. That works in the life of each person. If you don't know who you are and where you stand, you don't know what areas need improvement. I also want to point out that as we talk about these seven churches in the book of Revelation, that these were very real congregations. The congregations that you see here in the book of Revelations were not just fictitious representations of different church types. No, they were very real congregations who were established for the purpose of growing the faith of Christian believers and for the purpose of spreading or expanding the gospel throughout that region of the world. I asked the media team to, to, to put up a map. I think we have a map just of, of the seven churches. Will you put that up now? And I want you to understand because as we read this book, sometimes we lose sight and we think this, uh, the Lord is just talking in imagery, if you will. But, but you'll notice on this map, this tells us where those seven churches were, starting in Ephesus and Smyrna and Pergamos and Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Leo. Decia. And I also want you to understand that when you look at these churches, they, the churches now sit in, 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 in the part of the world, the region, the country actually uh, called Turkey uh, today. That's what it's called today. But, but, but these were, were churches that were established in Asia as the gospel began to spread by the disciples as it was spread throughout the then known world. A couple of things that, that, that I highlight for you as you look at the geographical location on the map. You can see that the order in which each church address is addressed, it corresponds to the route that a messenger would take coming from the island of Patmos. That's, that's that little island right there. You see the Aegean Sea, uh, and then there's a bigger island. There's a little small island, Patmos. That's, that's the island where, where John was when he received this revelation. But, but, but you notice the order of the churches um, uh, in which they are recorded or the order in which the messenger would take the message to each church. And, and so, 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 so the order lets us know that uh, that's how the message would receive. They would start off in Ephesus and they would make their way around as they went all the way around to Laodicea to disseminate the message of the churches. I wanted you just to see the map, uh, just so you can understand that these are very real places. In fact, you, you can go there today and they still have uh, ruins of, of the churches that we're referencing today. 
Uh, but, but, but I want to point that out because sometimes we read this, we don't understand that these are real places, these are real people. These are real congregations. They have the same kind of uh, uh, faults, the same kind of uh, um, uh, skills and talents as you and I are. But it, as we look at these seven churches in Revelation 2 and Revelation chapter 3, we see the church how Jesus saw the church as he gave them instructions with that vital science check. You can take the map down now, but, but I want you to know that it's important to start out looking at the health of the church. As I mentioned on today, we'll look at the message of the church to the church at Philadelphia and the church of Laodicea, the last two to conclude chapter three. And then on next week, we will conclude this portion uh, of, of, of this Revelation series of sermons as we get into the throne room of heaven and the mystery of the seven seals. We'll, we'll, we'll touch on the throne room of heaven and the mystery of the seven seals on next week. So, so, so you certainly don't want to miss that on next week's message. And, and we'll conclude this portion uh, of, of the Revelation series. And then as God uh, uh, directs at some time later on, we, we'll, we'll dive even deeper to, 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 to go further into the, to the text, but in Revelation 4 and 5, if you want to do your homework for next week, I read Revelation chapter 4 and 5. But on today, we have the last of the two of the seven churches on the list. And, and as we examine these two churches, the thing that immediately jumps out is the fact that although they were close physically in terms of geographic location, these two churches that we have today were perhaps the furthest apart in terms of their spiritual health and well-being. They were close in proximity, but, but, but in terms of their spiritual health and well-being, these two churches were perhaps the furthest apart. While one had only good things and no shortcomings that were identified by the Lord Jesus that needed improvement, the other had only shortcomings and no good things worthy of being mentioned. Philadelphia was one of the churches in which the Lord Jesus did not have any constructive criticism or areas that he would identify as room for improvement. But then when you get over to the church of the Laodiceans, this is the, the only church where the Lord didn't have anything good to say. It's a sad thing, my friends, when you call yourself a representative of the Lord and the Lord can't find anything good to say. But nevertheless, we will jump in and we'll look and examine at what the Lord said and what is the application for you and I today as we digest this message. Revelation 3, verses 7 through 12 says this, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things says he who is holy, he who is true. He who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. The Lord Jesus said, I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it, for you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan, who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet, and to know that I have loved you, because you have kept my command to persevere." I will also keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have that no one take your crown. The first one and the first church we'll look at is the church in Philadelphia. And we give you this first point, persevering in Philadelphia. Persevering. In Philadelphia. As the Lord Jesus begins to talk to the church at Philadelphia, he begins by telling them, I have set before you an open door. 
I've given you an open door. I've given you access. I've, I've given you a place of influence. And this open door that I've given you is something that no one can shut. The open door that God talks about when he talks to Philadelphia lets us know, my friends, that as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, God will give us access. God will give us opportunities. God will give us privileges that are meant specifically for you. What are you talking about? When God grants you an area of opportunity that is designed just for you, you must understand that there is no power in heaven. There is no power on earth. There is no power beneath the earth that can stop it. God says to this church in Philadelphia, I have set before you an open door. In other words, I have given you an opportunity that you can have if you want it, and nobody anywhere can do anything about it. I, I, I like to hear that when we talk about who God is and, and what God does, because as we like to say, what God has for you is yours. God, God says, Philadelphia, I, I, I've given you an open door. I, I've, I've given you access. I've given you opportunity. I've given you the ability to, to be the first and not the last. I've given you a privilege to be the head and not the tail. I have given you access to achieve your greatest accomplishments. It's an open door. But the thing about an open door is this, is that an open door means that you have access, but an open door doesn't mean that it's just a free handout. You have an opportunity, but if you want the opportunity, you got to walk through the door. It, 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 it's there for you. It's on the other side, but you have to go get it. And the Lord starts out with Philadelphia talking about them in this way. In fact, the Lord has given every church and every individual an open door policy where he's given us access to things that, that he has in store for us. He's given us access to levels of blessings that we can't even begin to imagine. But the great thing about it when it comes to this church in Philadelphia is the fact that God gave this church an open door and they not only received it, they walked through it with holy boldness. Isn't that amazing when God gives you an opportunity and you just take that opportunity, you grab hold of that opportunity and you make the very best of every opportunity that you can. I know last week we were talking about the Olympics. I, we still got a little bit more. It's, it's almost over. Not quite, probably over our by time. We can talk about it anymore. But, but there was a young man, 16-year-old. Uh, uh, his name was uh, uh, Quincy. I, I forget his last name. Uh, but, 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 but 16 years old, uh, and, and, and he was running. He ran, run, runs track. Uh, and, and he was so good at running track that, 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 that he got on the Olympic team. And, and at 16 years old, uh, uh, they won uh, that relay race that he was a part of to help them get there. He didn't run in the final, but he ran to help them position themselves to get to the final and he posted on Instagram he said yeah I got a gold medal and I got school in another week <laughs> isn't that something he, he was given an opportunity, given an given opportunity. He, 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 he didn't have the opportunity to run the anchor leg in the relay race, but he just got on the team. He got a chance to go all the way to Paris. He got a chance to be the youngest, uh, uh, the youngest uh, Olympian to win a gold medal in track and field, 16 years old. When, when God gives you that opportunity, you take it and you run with it and you give it the best that you can. This church had an opportunity for blessings that God bestowed, and they walked into it with full measure. But not only that, he tells them why they were successful and why he honored them, because he said there were, there, there were two, really three things that they did that were very important. First thing he told them to do, and this is in uh, uh, verse 8, he said, you have kept my word. Why, why, why do I praise the Church of Philadelphia? Because... The Lord Jesus says, you have kept my word, you, the, the, the whole verse. I've set before you an open door and no one can shed it for you have a little strength. You have kept my word and you have not denied my name. You kept 
my word. If you ever want to get the Lord Jesus excited, if you ever want to get the Lord being proud and being filled with joy at who you are and represent, at who you are and who you represent, the thing that you must do is to keep the word of God. He says, Philadelphia, I'm, I'm proud of you. I don't have anything negative to say about you because you have kept my word. What's the importance of keeping God's word? When you're born again, or even when you're baptized, that is a symbol of new birth, right? Uh, to be born again, to be baptized, that's a symbol of new birth. That means that you start life over again. And you start living not just unto yourself, but you start living or striving to live unto the Lord. But how do you think a baby would prosper if you have a newborn baby to come into this world, everybody's excited, everybody's celebrating, and you take that new home, newborn baby home and everybody's excited and everybody's celebrating, and you put that newborn baby in the baby crib and you just sit there, and you just sit there, and you just sit there. If that baby doesn't eat, guess what's gonna happen? That baby will not live. When you come into the knowledge and into the love of Jesus Christ, you have to have a diet that consists of the Word of God. You, you, you say, why do people start out strong in the faith and then they fade away? They stop eating. I, I, I saw a, 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 a video of the lady at the church, and she was wanting to get baptized, and the preacher gave her the microphone and said, you know, you know what, what has the Lord done for you, and so on and so forth there. And, and she said, I, I, I want to get baptized. She said, because that first one I had, that, that first one wore off, I think. <laughs> I, take, take, take me under again. Let, take me to the water. Let, <laughs> let me get a second. But, but let me tell you something. The baptism doesn't wear off. The problem wasn't with the baptism. The problem is when you don't eat the word of God. You follow me? When you don't feed your spiritual man or your spiritual woman, when you don't feed yourself with God's holy word, you cannot sustain yourself in life. It's impossible. Jesus said it best. He said, you shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The reason why God gave us his word is God gave us his word so that we can grow into the knowledge and the love of who he is and who he wants us to become. The Bible in 2 Timothy said all scripture is given by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine for reproof, for correction, for instructions and righteousness that the person of God may, may, may be thoroughly finished and thoroughly equipped for every good work. All scripture is given so that we might grow in the knowledge and the love of who God is. And if you don't have a healthy diet of God's word, you're starving yourself and you don't even know it. Not, 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 we use the example of a baby. When, when you start out, you, you need to be fed the word. And that's the reason why you start out with, with the milk of the word. That's the reason why it's important to come to church, to come to Bible study, Sunday school. All these, all these things are things that will that, help you understand the, the basics, the, the elementary level of, of understanding of what it means to be a child of Jesus Christ. But as you get older, you got to start feeding yourself. I remember when we got to the high school, the elementary school, you know, junior high come home, there'd be meals ready for us, and, and we didn't, sometimes we didn't even want to eat because it was all, you know, right, you know, sometimes when you're young, you, you, want, the, you, you want all the, 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 the fast foods, the pizzas and the burgers and all that stuff. As you get older, you realize them, them were some good meals. Uh, when, you, when you get older, you, 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 you had eaten all that little junk food, you want some of that good, that good food. Uh, you, you, you want something with some gravy on it and, and, and some mashed potatoes and green beans. You, you, you want some good food to stick with you. But, but nevertheless, by the time we got to high school, 
school, uh, we come home and we'd be asking, where was the food? And, 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 and mom would say, I mean, she, now she, she, she fed it, but, but there's some days she'd say, it's, it's hustle day. I mean, you better get in there and figure it out. I got groceries in the, <laughs> I got groceries in the refrigerator. We got food in the pantry. You figure it out. Figure it out. You, you older, I taught you some things. And, 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 and as you get older, you got to learn how to get the word yourself. But you got to keep on eating the word. You got to keep on feasting on the word. And, and Jesus said, the church in Philadelphia prospered because they kept his word. And let me tell you something, my friend. I don't care if you read the Bible from cover to cover 20, 30, 40, 50 times. You got to keep reading it. Because the word of God is alive. It's going to get, you can read the same passage of scripture that you read 20 years ago and you read it today. And I guarantee you, if you read it in the spirit, you're going to get something new out of it. Because the word of God is alive. And also you're at a different place in your life where there's things that you may have missed before that you can see now that you didn't see before. And God said the reason why the church in Philadelphia is prospering is because they kept his word. They, they, they honored the word. Uh, they, they, they abided in the word. They, they were hungry and thirsty for the word. And they sought after God's word. But then he also says not only did they keep his word, he said, you have not denied my name. Remember, during the time of Revelation, this was the time when the church was facing heavy persecution. There were many Christians who were being killed by virtue of the fact that they professed faith and belief in Jesus Christ. They were being killed. They, they were being killed. And, and, and I say that there are still places in this world today, there are still countries where if you are a Christian, you will be killed. That, 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 um, I forget what country it was, but, but it, when I was doing some, some studying uh, of, of an international uh, group, uh, and there was someone who mentioned that if you were caught carrying the Bible, they, they will literally cut your hand off if you're just carrying the Bible. Not, not reading it, just carry it. And now we got the Bibles that we can, we can got on, we have it on our phone. We used to have to say, you know, when we call the scripture out, you know, let me know when you get there. Now y'all don't even have to flip no page. You just punch it. You just punch it right in. Sometimes you just talk to your phone and, and the scripture just pops right up. But, 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 but the thing that I'm saying here is that they were being killed for the name of Jesus Christ. And, and what the Lord Jesus said, you've honored my name. You didn't deny me when the going got tough. The, the third commandment that, 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 that God gives us in the book of Exodus, he says, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. When it comes to the name of God and it comes to the name of Jesus, he has a high regard for his name. There's power in the name of Jesus Christ. How do you know there's power? At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now, I know there's some, 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 some folks who, who, who will make lightly of the name of Jesus, but I want you to understand that there is power in his holy name. When you call on the name of Jesus, there are some things that will happen and there are some things that will change. There are some situations and some circumstances. There are some devils that have to back up when you call on the name of Jesus. He says, you've kept my word. You've honored my name. You haven't denied my name. When, when the going got tough, you, you didn't throw in the towel, but you kept on holding on to Jesus. And while we can look at these days that they went through back then, you need to understand that there will come days, as you read on further in the book of Revelation, the same type of trials and tribulations that they faced then for being identified as a Christian, that thing is going to come back around again, y'all. Where your faith will be a determination of how you fare in society. You'll be challenged for your faith. For your belief. And, and that's going to weed out a whole lot of pretenders. If you're not real about this thing, it'll be known. But Jesus said, the church in Philadelphia, you've kept my word, you've honored my name. But then also, if you go on down further to verse 10, he says that they persevere. We're talking about the church that the Lord didn't have anything negative to say. But the church that, that was thriving, the church that was doing what God told them to do. He said, because you have kept my command to persevere, 
I will also keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. They kept the word, they honored his holy name, and they persevered. P persevere. We talk about the persevering church in Philadelphia. What does it mean to persevere? Persevere uh, literally means, when, when you look that word up, the, the Greek word uh, that's used there, it mi literally means to endure patiently. Persevere means patient continuance. I I'm steady going, but I'm patient about it. I I've got joy. I I'm steady going, but I'm patient about it. I it may not come as soon as I want it to, but, but I'm steady going and I'm patient about it. I in other words, I I I'm, I'm trying to get there. I know where I'm going, but, but I'm patient about it. I, I, I don't get too high. I don't get too low, but I'm steady making progress. I'm steady moving in the right direction. I'm steady doing what the Lord has told me to do. To persevere means that you're built to last. You don't just pop up for a season and then quickly fade away. You don't start out strong as fast as you can and then you don't have enough endurance to continue until the end. To persevere means that you are able to stand and to withstand without wavering, to push through all of the ups and all of the downs, the good and the bad, to push through the setbacks as well as the setups while maintaining a confident discipline and resolve about who you are and whose you are. The, the biggest thing that Philadelphia had going for them is that when they were tried in the fire of life, they showed God that they had something on the inside that caused them to keep on going no matter what came their way. Somebody said is you take a you, you take you take take a licking, but you you keep on ticking because you're on the road for the Lord and you know that there's nothing, there's no way that you're gonna turn back now. They persevered. And God saw that, 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 that ought to be something inside of us that says, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to quit. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to lay it down. I'm, I'm not going to throw in the towel. Uh, she carried riches. We, we go back to the Olympics. The last, you know, the last Olympics, she, 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 she was one of the top runners, but then she got disqualified. They, they said, well, 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 well you, can't, you can't go to the Olympics in, in 2021. She could have easily thrown in the towel and could have easily said, well, well look here, I, I guess it's not meant for me to be. They treat me wrong. I, I'm not going to participate in your game. She carried riches. It's right here from Dallas, right here from Oak Cliff area. Uh, I went to Carter High School. Uh, she carried riches. She, 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 she didn't just uh, take that and, and lower, her leg, uh, lower her head down. She persevered, and she persevered. Uh, she, she, she not only decided to go back to this next Olympic Games, but she said, I'm not just here uh, as a comeback. I'm here. I'm better than I was before. I'm stronger than I was before. I'm wiser than I was before. And, and when they had that 4 by 100 relay, uh, and they were running that race, and, and they gave it a baton, she was in fourth place. She said, no, I, I've come too far to turn back now. I, I'm going to push this thing through. I'm going to run this thing through. Uh, there you go, number three. There you go, number two. There you go, number one. And she went on and ran the goal because you got to have something on the inside that won't let you quit, that won't let you give up, and that won't let you give in. <laughs> Philadelphia, they, 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 it was a church that persevered. And, and there's some folks that just have that, that knack that just say, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep on no matter what comes my way, I'm going to keep on pressing my way. And the Lord said, I, I see you. You're keeping my word. You're honoring my name. And you have a perseverance that's like none other. You are the kind of church that I'm looking for. And he said, because of that, he, he says, I'm going to keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell. Oh. Before I go on to the next church, I, I want to mention that because, because we want to understand what, what that is about. He, he said, because you persevered, but because you've done the things that I told you to do, I'm going to give you a special pass. It, 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 it's like a, a get out of trial free card. Now, you got to understand, this is a unique individual gift of favor that was granted by the Lord. It's not a universal grant of favor. What am I saying? Just because you go through trials, that doesn't mean that you've done something wrong. You understand what I'm saying? Just because you go through some, some, some difficult days, that doesn't mean anything wrong. And the Bible lets us know that. If that would be the case, 
Jesus would be wrong because Jesus went through the greatest trial of all. He, he was crucified, uh, uh, died, and buried because of who he was, and he did absolutely nothing wrong. But, but there are certain times where, where God looks at your life, and God says, you know what? I'm going to cover you. I'm going to protect you. You may have to go through it, but you're not going to even feel it. And, 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 and that's a favor that, that I can't give you. That's a favor that your mom and daddy can't give you. That's a favor that only comes from God. And God said to Philadelphia Church, because of who you are, because of how you represented me, I'm going to give you this past, the suffering that the world is about to go through, you are exempt from it. What does it mean? I, I, I was, when I first started pastoring, I was pastoring a um, uh, church in Jacksonville, Texas, um, um, Churchill Church in Jacksonville, Texas, right off of 175 Highway. And, and there was a member, one of the older members there that I used to go and take communion to. Sweetest lady you'd ever want to meet. Uh, uh, you know, just, just as kind and sweet. Just, you, you, could just, you could just feel the love uh, just, just, just in her voice um, you know, as, you would, as I would talk to her. And, and as I was there, um, one day we got to talking about uh, a tornado, because there was a tornado that had come through Jacksonville, Texas uh, a few years before. In fact, it had destroyed one of the CME churches, uh, one, well, several churches, but several, several uh, places, but, but one of the churches there in, 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 in Jacksonville. And uh, her caregiver who was there, she, she told me, she said, you know, um, when the tornado came through, um, it took the roof off, off, off of her house. But she... This is what she told me. She, she was asleep, and she didn't even know it. She woke up the next morning, her roof gone, but she had sleep. She had peace like nobody else. And what am I saying to you, my friend? There are some times when God gives you favor. I, I can't explain it, but sometimes God said, you, you might go through the storm, but I'm going to give you some peace that passes all understanding. Everybody else, the, the alarm's going off. Everybody else running for cover, ducking for cover. But, but she said she slept all the way through. And she woke up in the morning. She heard the birds chirping. She didn't realize she didn't have no roof on the house. But God covered her. God protected her. And God said, you, you, you've been faithful to me. I'm not going to even disturb your sleep. Get, get your sleep, honey. Get, get your rest. I, 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 we'll deal with this tomorrow morning. And, and she woke up and she dealt with what she had to deal with. But, but, but God granted her that favor where she wouldn't have to experience the consequences of the storm. And, and that's what the Lord is saying here. He's saying, Philadelphia, because you have been so faithful and so true to me, I'm going to give you a special privilege of past to where the trials is coming. You don't even have to worry about you don't have to deal with it. The persevering church in Philadelphia. And while we talk about the persevering church in Philadelphia, you must understand that it also is the lukewarm church in Laodicea. T two, two, only two churches we're talking about on today. The lukewarm church in Laodicea. Uh, over in Revelation 3, beginning at verse 14, he says, and to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things says the amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning, the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you were lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. It's such a horrible a disgusting uh, 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 taste in the Lord's mouth that he says, because you're neither hot nor cold, I'm not only going to rebuke you. I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. Verse 17, because you say I am rich and have become wealthy, because you say to yourself, I have no need of nothing, and you do not know that while you think you got everything, you are wretched, you're miserable, you're poor, you're blind, and naked. Verse 18 says, if I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich, and buy white garments that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. And anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see as many as I love, I rebuke and I chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. We talked about the persevering church in Philadelphia, but, but now we get to the lukewarm church in Laodicea. I, I know your works. You, you're neither cold, you're neither hot. 
you're not on fire for the Lord, but you don't just come out right and reject the Lord. You just in the middle road. You stand on the fence. You, 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 you're trying to have, as they say, your cake, and you're trying to eat it too. I used to didn't understand what that meant that I thought about it. Uh, uh, you know, if you eat your cake today, you, you're not going to have no cake tomorrow. It's gone. Uh, it, it, it's, it's gone. And, and, and if you get some good cake you, you, where, you, where you're licking the frost and all that stuff off, you, you're not going to even have no crumbs to go back after. If you eat it today, it's gonna, you, you can't have it both ways. Pick a side is what the Lord is saying. You, you know, when, when you drive down the road, if, if there's not a median, not, not a highway, there's something called a turning lane. Any of y'all ever seen it? The turning lane uh, was, was a middle lane you get into, the, and the lane is only reserved for turning. You're going this way, and you get into that middle lane, and this allows you to turn that way. If you're coming the opposite way, you get in the middle lane, you turn that way. The turning lane is meant for turning. Turning lane is not meant for driving. What he's saying here, being lukewarm, it's just like trying to drive in a turning lane. You're going to have folk mad at you on both sides of the street. Because you're driving down the turning lane, the folks that are trying to come this way, they're trying to turn, you in their way, and they don't know, you're supposed to stop and turn. You don't get in the turning lane to drive, you get in the turning lane to turn to make a decision. But what he says to the lukewarm church, he said, I, I really don't have anything good to say about y'all because y'all haven't decided what you want to be. Lukewarm. You're not hot, you're not cold, you're just going to go whichever way the wind blows. You stand in the middle because you want to be ready. But you go whichever way the wind blows. The Lord says, and this is, 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 is the, 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 use the word vomit here, and it's a strong imagery because I want you to understand how the Lord feels about those who don't make a decision for him. The Lord is saying, either you're going to pick me or you're going to pick to be against me. You can't have it both ways. And what I'm saying, try, try to make it plain. How, how, how does it mean, what does it mean to be a lukewarm church uh, in, in today's age? And, and you got to be careful about the lukewarm church because to be a lukewarm church, it means that you have some knowledge of who God is. You will come to church, praise the Lord, hallelujah, amen. You saved and sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost on Sunday. But then on Monday, sometimes Sunday night, <laughs> Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, there's nothing in your life that tells anybody that you're a child of God. You, you want to have your cake, you want to eat it too. You, you drive in the turn. When, 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 when you're around Christian folks, your, your, your conversation changes. Your words change, but you get around your boys or your girls, that language, hey, hey you, you, just, you, just, you just let it rip. You let it rip uh, when, when, when you get, get into a safe place. And, and what, what I'm trying to tell you, my friend, is that the Lord says you need to decide who you want to be with. God is saying, I'm, the one thing about the Lord Jesus Christ, he's never going to force anybody to do anything. He, he's not going to do it. He, he said, I'm giving you an opportunity. If you want me, come get me, but don't play with me. Don't leave me on like you with me and then you're not really there. Hello, somebody. If you love the Lord, love the Lord. If you don't love him, don't love him. Just tell him where you stand so that God can know what you're about. And let me tell you something. The, the, the problem with being lukewarm is, is, is that, that you will deceive yourself. See, see this is a church who accepted Jesus Christ when the gospel came to them, but then they weren't living up to who Jesus was. They were just going along with the ways of the world. Do you believe in the Lord? Yeah, I believe, I believe in God. Yeah, all, all that good stuff in there. Yeah, the Bible. Yeah, I, I believe in all that stuff that's in there. That's right. Hey, praise the Lord. But, but, but when it came time for the world, they continued to do what they were doing all along the way. And the problem with that is that the only person you're deceiving is yourself. He, he said they looked at themselves. They said, oh, we good. 
Yeah, I, I, we got it together. Yeah, we, yeah, ain't nothing wrong with us over here. We, we, we're rich. We, we, we got all the things that we need to do. We, 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 we got the right clothes. We got the, we got the right speech. We, we got, we, we, we're rich in the Lord. But God says, you don't realize you're miserable. You're poor. You're wretched. You, you, you aren't honoring me because you're not genuine and authentic with your faith. The Christian faith, my friends, is not something to do just because it's convenient. It's something that we subscribe to because we believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. If you don't believe that he died and that he rose again, then you might as well not believe anything at all. I love the Lord. Why? Because he heard my cry. Not, not in a general sense, but, but, but because he did something great for me. And what the Lord is saying to you and I is that you can't have it both ways. You have to pick and choose who you are going to be with. Christianity is a faith that requires a decision and requires a choice. I, I, I was in um, uh, Portland, Oregon, I think it was the year 2000, for work. Uh, uh, we had just bought some new banks, and I was helping uh, do some conversions up there in Oregon. Uh, and and uh, they gave me some uh, tickets to see the uh, basketball game, uh, the Portland Trail Blazers there. Staying in a hotel downtown Portland, Oregon. Uh, and I got the tickets to go see the basketball game. And, 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 you know, they said, you know, you might as well just ride. They have a rapid transit system. I forget what it's called. But, but, but I took the tram or something like that. But I, but I took the train f from downtown to go to the arena to watch the uh, Portland uh, 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 Portland Trailblazers play basketball. It was a good game, had great seats, uh, great time there. But, but, but because I was in a foreign city, and this was before the days of, of, of GPS widespread, um, I, certainly there wasn't no such thing as smartphones or anything like that. Uh, and, and so when I went to the game, I, I didn't really pay much attention uh, to, to which direction I was going. I just knew to get on the train and, and got on there and went. So after the game is over, I'll come out and I go to uh, get back on the train to go back to my hotel. And, and I was standing on the side where I really should have been, but then I saw everybody else is on the other side. <laughs> and they happy and said, yeah, we won. And, and I'm thinking, I'm on this side by myself. Let me, let me go over here on this other side. Maybe, maybe I don't know where I'm going. And so everybody got on the train. I got on the, you know, fought myself to get on there. And we got to going. And we got to going. I ain't seeing no lights, no buildings, or nothing. We, we getting out, and I'm, 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 I'm saying, now, wait a minute, I, this, this ain't, this, you know, it's nighttime. I, I, I don't know where I am. And then it got to the point to where I knew I was going the wrong way, but I was too embarrassed <laughs> to admit I was going the wrong way. So I'm sitting there talking to myself, how am I going to get off this train and make these people think that I knew, I knew where I'm going? But finally, I got so far away from where I was trying to go, I had to get off swallow my pride, walk all the way across the track to the other side and get on the train and go back in the opposite direction. What am I saying, my friend? When you, when you don't decide which way you're going to go, when you don't make a decision for the Lord, you, you, you will go where the crowd is. You go where it's popular, where it's convenient to go. I was in the right place, uh, uh, but, but, but because I wasn't committed to it, when I saw everybody else on the other side happy and laughing, I said, let me get on with everybody else. And while I laugh about that, that's what happens in life. We get on with everybody else. And we know, we know we're going the wrong. Now, I could have easily asked them up front, which, which way do I go to go back downtown? Now, I should have known everybody at, at the Portland uh, uh, Trailblazers game don't live downtown. I, I should have known that in my mind. But I got caught up with the crowd. Same crowd I'd been in there celebrating with uh, for the victory for, for Portland uh, uh, Trailblazers. But, 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 but what I'm saying, if you're not committed, anything that comes along will blow you off course. And what the Lord was telling the church of Laodicea, because you're not committed to me, you're phony. You're fake. You, you're not real. You can't stand. You, you, you don't stand for me. And, and now that, that I know who God is, in my life, I don't care if I'm standing at the track all by myself. I don't care if the train is running an hour, two hours, three hours late because I'm committed and I know where I'm going. I know who I am and I know who I am. I'm going to stay right there and I'm going to wait on the Lord. The rest of y'all can go that way if you want to. You can have fun, have a good time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But, but I know the Lord told me to go this way and this is the way that I'm going to go because I'm committed 
to do what God said do. And that's what the Lord was telling this church. He said, you, you got to make a commitment. You got to make a choice. You got to make a decision about which way you're going to go. And when you choose the Lord Jesus, he will never let you down. Persevering in Philadelphia, lukewarm in Laodicea. Third and final point as we wrap this session up. Jesus knocking at the door. After Jesus uh, 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 reprimanded the church in Laodicea for, for being lukewarm, you, you need the hot for me, you need the cold for me, you, you know, it, you know you, 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 you're in a place where it's hard to reach you because, because you think everything is fine, but you're not willing to admit the truth. But Jesus doesn't leave them there. After he, he says, I chastise those who I, who I love. Jesus said, I wouldn't tell you that you were in a bad place if I didn't love you, if I didn't care about you. If I didn't care about you, I'd let you keep on going the way you're going. But because I love you, I'm telling you, y'all need to straighten up and change your ways. That's, that's what he's telling the church here. But in chapter 3, verse 20, I love this, and this is how Jesus concludes his message to the church. Churches, he said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. I, I'm knocking at the door. If anyone hears my voice and open the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Je Jesus says, he, he gives a list of all these different churches. We went through the seven different churches uh, uh, of all the different things that they had. Yeah, what were they doing well? What areas did they need to improve on? Uh, what were the actionable changes that they need to make as a result of what they knew? And, and, and then finally, what were the consequences if, if, if they chose to make the change or if they chose not to make the change? Jesus went through all these different churches, and at the end, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And when Jesus says, I'm knocking, he, he, he's not knocking at a physical door, but he's really knocking at the door of your heart. And he's knocking at the door of your heart because he's saying, I have something for you. You can't even understand how much I love you and how much I want you to receive this. But, but I, I can't force it on you. Because if I force my will on you, th then you haven't made a choice. I, I'm just going to knock at the door. And whosoever will, if you open the door, you just let me come in. Th th that's the whole gospel. I'm not sure. Je Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. And he says, if you want me to come in, I'll come in. And if you allow me to come in, I'll, I'll come in. I'll sit down with you. I'll talk with you. I'll, I'll allow you to learn of who I am, how much I love you. I'll allow you to, 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 to receive wisdom and insight on the heavens and, and, and wisdom and insight on the earth and wisdom and insight on what true love is really all about. You don't understand the plan that God has for you. It is for you. But you just need to open the door of your heart. And let me in. Learn of me. Study from me. Come to appreciate me. And I will, I have so much, so much, so much that I want to give you, but I can only give it to you if you let me in. Let me, let me wrap with this, wrap up with this. There I was, uh, November 11th, 1990, College Station, Texas. I'm sophomore year. Uh, in college at Texas A&M University. November 10th, 1990, uh, it was a typical college night, uh, drinking. I'm sorry, y'all, I, I was a minor. I, 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 I was underage, drinking, gambling. I, I, I won pretty good that night, gambling um, uh, on that. Um, and, and as old folks, you say, out chasing women. Uh, do, doing all the things that, that, that I knew I shouldn't be doing. Many of y'all know because they grew up with several of you. I grew up in the church, right? Sang in the choir, ushered on the usher board, took, took the, you know, the, the CYF trips. Did all those things that I was supposed to do. From, 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 from the church's standpoint, I looked good on paper. I'm just being real with you. I, I, I looked good on paper. I, I, I had all the different things checked off on the box. I had been baptized, all, the, all that stuff like that. But the life I was living was a life that did not honor God. 
I didn't honor God with my life. I didn't honor God with the language that I use. I didn't honor God how I treated his people, his daughters. I, I, I didn't honor God how, how, how I treated his daughters. I, I didn't honor God how I thought about people. It was all about what can I get from you. And I, that, that, was my, that, was my, that, that, that was my mindset. That was my mode of operation. I, and I was having fun. Okay, I was having a lot of fun. It, it, was, it, 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 it was fun. Uh, it was fun. I thought, but, 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 but with fun, there are consequences that you don't, you don't realize on the other end. So I'm thinking I'm doing all these things. I'm having fun. I'm uh, yeah, man, with the crowd. You know, we got my boys. We, we, we're doing everything that, that we want to do. And, uh, and I'm thinking I'm really living life. And there I am. I get to church there on November the 11th. And, uh, and we went, you heard my story. I, I went to church not for the right reasons. Uh, we had the party girls on Saturday night, but then the church girls on Sunday. So, so you know, girls would go to church. So, so you know, wanted, you, you got to, you know, I was straddling the fence. I wanted both. I, I wanted, I, I wanted to be covered either, either, way, either way it went. And so go to church, and I'm in there, and, and, and our college choir is singing. And, and they're singing with a, with the authenticity that, that I, I, I just hadn't experienced before. They, they were singing, not just singing songs, not just sounding good, but, but, but it appeared to me that they had a connection with Jesus that I didn't have. And, and for the first time in my life, the Lord had been speaking to me so many times. There were so many instances where God was, was speaking to me, trying to get my attention, but I just blew it off. But, but, but this time, it, it just jumped out to me that I didn't have the relationship with the Lord that I said I had. Nobody had to tell me that. I knew it. And it was as if the Holy Spirit uh, spoke to me. And the Lord said, look at your life. If you were to die right now, are you prepared to meet the Lord? If you were to have to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ, who's able to see everything, he says the eyes are fire, he's able to see everything you've ever done, would you be able to hold your head up? Or would you hold your head down in shame? And it was there that the Lord said, I'm not going to worry about what you did, but I'm giving you an opportunity to get this thing right. And he said, if you will come and give your life to me, I will do for you what you can never do for yourself. And I'll never forget the invitation that, that, that one of my friends uh, made, who was, was a preacher at the time. He said, the Lord wants you to come when you're sick. You don't go to the doctor after you've gotten yourself ready. Because my whole thing was, I'm going to get all this out of my system now. And then when I get ready, when I get too old or whatever, <laughs> I can't do it no more. Then, then I'm going I'm, I'm to give it to the Lord. But, but I... I was wanting to fix myself before I came to the Lord. And the Lord said, uh-uh. You come to me just as you are. You can't fix yourself. You, you're not qualified. Because you, you, don't, you don't even see what's really wrong with you. But let me tell you something. By the time I got to the front of that church, that, and, and, and that was the longest invitation I ever heard. Because other people were going down, and I fought that thing. I, I fought it. I, I didn't want to do it. Because I, I was trying to tell myself all these different things, but finally the Lord just said, get up. And when I got to the front, the Lord literally changed my heart. And it was like a light that was open that I, I had never seen before. I, I'd never understood. I, I used to think that, that, that sin was about not having fun, but I didn't realize sin is really about God wanting to protect us from danger. God tells us to avoid sin, not because he doesn't want us to have fun. He, tell, he, he tells us to avoid sin because he says there's some danger that comes along with that. When you play with the devil, the devil plays for keep. He ain't, he, he ain't out here just trying to have fun. He, he trying to, he's trying to get something from you. He's trying to steal some joy. He's trying to disrupt some lies. He's trying to, he's trying to do damage to your life. And you don't realize how much damage is done until you turn it over to Jesus and Jesus shows you how much healing that lies in his hand. Salvation is simple, my friend. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. 
You confess, you acknowledge Jesus before men, you honor his name, and then you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You believe, you have faith in him that he is the savior of the world. You shall be saved. And when you come into the salvation and knowledge of who God is, the only thing you do after that is you just keep studying his holy word. You keep trusting in him. You keep leaning upon him. You keep depending upon him. And you will watch God take you from where you were into where he wants you to be. And let me tell you something, my friend. I, I, I didn't realize that at a young age, I was 19 at the time. I didn't realize that at a young age, you could have that kind of relationship with the Lord. Oh, there were many things that I, I missed out on after the fact, but I didn't miss out on them and feeling sad. I missed out on them feeling glad because I knew that I was gaining a closer and a closer walk with the Lord up above. And when you have that kind of relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, let me tell you something. God says, I will open up the windows of heaven. I will pour you out blessings that, that, that you cannot receive it. I got so much goodness inside of me. I got so much revelation inside of me. If you will just trust me if you just lean and depend upon if you will just hold on to my holy name I've got something in store that, that, that you cannot even begin to comprehend what I'm telling you my friend Jesus is knocking at the door of hearts all across the world Jesus is knocking at doors of hearts in this room Jesus is knocking at the door of hearts online Jesus is knocking at doors of hearts all over the world because Jesus says I died so that you might have life I died so that you might have life more abundantly I've come to this world to spread love to spread joy to spread peace but you got to have true peace don't have that counterfeit peace you got to have true peace and you can only have that when you accept me as your savior. I don't know about you, my friend, but this thing is real to me. It, 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 this thing is it, not a game. This thing is real to me. And that's when you know, when that perseverance, came, you know this thing is real because I've been, I've been through too much. I, I've come through many, too many, I've seen too many things in my life not to be able to stand here today and tell you that Jesus is real. Why? I can feel him deep down in my soul. And if you don't have that kind of connection with the Lord, I invite you, don't wait, don't, don't put it off, don't say I can't ask for other people, just for preacher. You can have that same kind of relationship with the Lord that other believers have because you have invited him in. And, and, and I, he takes you right where you, he's going to walk you through step by step. You're saying I can't figure this thing out, I don't know what, you ain't, you, you're not supposed to understand that. You, you got to take it step by step. Because there's stuff that you can't handle right now, but when you open the door, he'll show you everything that you need to know. We're going to extend the invitation right now. Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. And if Jesus is speaking to you, I don't know who you are, I don't know what you're dealing with, but, but if Jesus is speaking to you, we invite you to give your heart, to give your mind to him. If you're here.